Hey family, are you having questions about what's going to happen during these last days? Are you a believer that we are in the last of the last days? Well, you've came to the right spot. Welcome to Surviving the Last Days podcast, where we're going to explore end time prophecies as well as scripture. Let's get started, family, and fortify each other's faith. Hey everyone, or hey my family, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so it's 9.48, it's 9.40 a.m. Central Standard Time in the evening. Um, I'm just coming to you guys and wanting to have a chat with you about um, Ecclesiastes 1.9. So the title of this episode is called Nothing New Under the Sun. So guys, I don't know how your week has been going, but mine has been um, not that bad. I wouldn't say, I I can't complain, right? We can't complain. Um, But I learned learned something new um, that I would like to share with you this week. Um, So... I like to consider myself an emotionally intelligent person, Um, someone who's emotionally aware, definitely an empath, Um, maybe even even an intuitive empath, if that's the thing. Um, I'm I'm very sympathetic and um, give or take on which day it is. If I watch a sad movie, I could possibly cry. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but, but saying all that, I, I still don't know. I still didn't know or recognize until recently this week that I don't really know how to respond emotionally, um, how do I put this? It's like when it comes to adults, I kind of know what they're going through because I go through it, right? But when it comes to like dealing with teenagers or adolescents, um, I haven't been a teenager in a long time. So, and I, and when I was a teenager, I didn't really get emotional support for real. Like I got a little bit of it, but I can't say strongly in my life I didn't um even up until adulthood before I got in heavily in 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 awareness of God um I kind of was my own emotional support and and how I used to deal with things was um before God uh man I don't even know I don't even remember because I guess I would exercise, maybe go out in nature or something like that. But um, for the most part, um, as I matured in Christ and I matured in in my knowledge of the true God, the eternal living God, Yahweh, um, I did start to become emotionally intelligent. But I noticed recently that I don't respond to adolescents emotionally right. Um, And for whatever reason that could be. But what I mean by that is like when presented with an event where I need to give or understand where someone is coming from emotionally as a teenager, I would be like, you know how you, you're dealing with a teenager, right? And you don't agree with what that teenager is saying. And it's something that that teenager is going through in, in their adolescent era of life that you just probably don't get or whatever. So with me not getting it, I just want to hurry up and correct the person. Oh, you're you're not thinking right. This is how you should be thinking. Or I just want to banish the person's or make it go away or something like that because I know that they're young and I'm I'm like you know it's not to be mean but I just feel like you're not feeling this the right way this isn't how you should feel this is how you should feel 
Um, but I learned that when somebody is going through something, adult or adolescent, and they're going through it emotionally, and they don't want to change what they don't want to change the feeling they they're they're going through it and you can't banish it away they're going to go through this feeling all you can do with them is make sure they don't feel alone and that you go through it with them amen it's like with god he's our father in heaven yahweh but when we're going through something emotionally I mean, we probably pray for God to take it away, but God doesn't really go to the rescue to take it away. He might even go through it with you and make you stronger in the process, but he don't take away your emotional event that you're going through. Now, he's not a magician or he he just, okay, it's gone now. You're not, you're not an emotional wreck right now. In three minutes, it's gone. No, he'll, he'll. He'll help you. He'll go through it with you and give you counsel. And that helps you cope with it. But he doesn't try to banish it away. or uh, So that's what I learned this week. And, and that's my little epiphany for this week. Like when someone is going through something, whether it be your wife, your husband, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your uncle, when someone that you love or even a um, someone that you don't know, but you have love for your fellow human, right? Um, it doesn't matter. Any human being that's going through something emotionally that you're close with or whatever, um, and that where you're able to go through it with them, that's the option you should choose. Don't try to banish it away, but go through it with them because you're not going to, change a person's mind okay it's like it's like if someone comes to you and they have a problem at work and they're like hey i'm having this problem at work uh, these people are really scrutinizing my work and they're making me they're making me feel really tiny and little inside and i'm i'm emotionally anxious about it. i'm full of anxiety and um i don't want to go to work sometimes i want to call off um and if they keep having that problem, right, because we all know those people, they keep having the same problem. And you got those friends who, like I used to be, I guess. Well, I never, I ain't going to say I ever been like that. But but basically, you got those friends that they don't want to talk to you no more. I've never been that person. I ain't going to say that. But I have been the person, like, I'm not going to chime in on conversation on it no more because I don't, I think you should, if I feel like you should take a stance or do this option, like if I feel like, okay, you should stand up for yourself. You should, you know, talk back to those people and you're not doing it and you keep coming back with the same problem. I would just probably give less energy into that conversation. But now I learned to go through that with the person, which it could be detrimental to somebody who is emotionally fragile already. You might not want to go through something emotionally with someone else, but like you don't have a choice if it's your spouse or your family member, you know, you kind of do have to go through it with them. That's why when you have a family and when you become a spouse to someone, you should automatically have it in your mind that now that you have this, child or this spouse like everything they go through emotionally you're gonna have to go through with them as well because you don't want to emotionally abandon them and you don't want to emotionally banish them so you gotta go through it with them and back to my example you know now that I have that epiphany that that enlightenment that revelation if someone was to have that issue where they're constantly coming back with the same having the same emotional strain and anxiety over bullying at work, I, instead of making them try to force them to change their mind and change the way they behave and react, they're not ready for that. So I would just go through it with them and find other options to help them cope 
with an emotional anxiety. Um, like they might say, well, maybe if I, maybe if I do, I make more burgers in an hour that, that I can get, you know, better my reputation of the job. And then I'll just go with that. Instead of me saying my own thing, like, oh, you should stick it for yourself. You should, you should talk back to those people. Um, I'm just not going to do that and force somebody to be something that they're not, you know? So I, if that person says, hey, I want to make more burgers and if, if they work at a fast food place, and I want to make more burgers per hour. Maybe I can better better my reputation. If that's what you feel like you want to do to help you look better, then I'm going to go through that with you. I'm going to tell you how to prepare that burger. Maybe you should put the lettuce on top. <laughs> Maybe you should put, you know, the sauce in the middle or something. I'm going to help you go through go through that emotional event that you're having with because of that issue instead of banishing it and instead of forcing you to respond to it the way I want you to respond to it you're your own individual you just probably want somebody to go through it with you the emotional event and help you with it and and that's all that's what we can do as emotional um partners to people in life you know that's that's the way it goes, you know. You can't emotionally abandon your wife, your husband, your children. You have to go through through emotional things with them. That's that's the responsibility of being a parent and being a mentor and being a spouse and being a family member in general, you know. So I just thought I wanted to share that with you guys and I hope I was clear on exactly what I was trying to um, relay. <laughs> but it also brought me to this topic that nothing new is under the sun. And if you want to grab your Bible or your digital Bible, you can look this scripture up now or later. Um, it's called Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. But before I get into that, I want to know what have you learned recently this week? We're almost done with this week. We are on, what are we on, Thursday? No, we are on Wednesday. Wednesday, February 7th. I don't know why I thought it was Thursday. Um, Wednesday, February 7th. We still got tomorrow, Thursday. Um, Then we got Friday. But, but so far, you know, we've had Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, four days. Have you guys had any revelations or anything like that um, that will help your life, help your family life, your work life, your school life if you're in school? Shout out to everybody who's going to school, though. I see a lot of people going back to school. And, um, you know, they're up in age. And I know that I'm, I wouldn't even dare try to go back to school because I'm just over accumulating debt. Um, but I did come across an opportunity where I can go to school for free. And that's by working for a university, a particular university I, I came in contact with. Um, and they offer uh, free, free education. And I'm like, wow, maybe I could finally get my master's and my PhD. Hey, why not? because I definitely wasn't going to get it if I had to go back and did. But I have a bachelor's degree, bachelor of science degree in psychology, so I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. I'm, I just got to pick a major, guys. They get marriage and family, but they have so many di different degrees. I can't wait to learn more. And then, you know, ask the most high, consult the most high to ch tell me to choose, to choose the um, appropriate um, degree or whatever. But anyway, if you guys have learned something cool this weekend, um, I mean this week, <laughs> I'm talking about weekend, uh, then you can definitely email me what you have learned at survivingthelastdays at gmail.com. I'm really not using my social media these days. That's why I'm not directing you guys there. But if you want to go there, I do have a group for y'all to go to and communicate with each other. Um, it's surviving the last days group. You probably can hashtag that or something, or you can, um, 
you can go to my website, which is linktree slash Ashley Shante and join the group. L I N K T R dot E E slash Ashley Shante S H A N T E. And um, you'll be able to join the group. And uh, if you want to look me up on Instagram, it's hashtag surviving the last days podcast. I'm also on YouTube at surviving the last days. Hashtag surviving the last days on YouTube. Um, I don't know what platform you guys are listening on. Maybe Apple or um, some other listening platform. But I hope that you can find like a notification bell or a follow button. Um, And then that way, anytime I make a new episode, you will be alerted to come have a conversation with me. Um. So no matter where you are in the world, I think we all can relate to this topic about nothing being new under the sun. So if you had time to look up that um, scripture, Ecclesiastes 1.9, I'm going to read it. Mines, I'm going to read it. Okay, so it says, all things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the nor the ear its feel of hearing. What has been will be again, and what has been done again, there is nothing new under the sun. I don't know what your scripture says, what your Bible says, but I'll read um I can read, um, let me pull up my, uh, King J- KJV version, see what that says. I always like to use the KJV too. Pull up my KJV and see what that say. Okay. All right. I have this KJV Bible app. And did you know Did you know that I have two KJV Bible apps? One of them has the Apocrypha in it. So if you're looking for the missing books of the Bible or what people call the missing books of the Bible, you can actually get the KJV app and just type in KJV Bible with Apocrypha on Google Play or maybe Apple. Um, and then it should come up. All right, let's look for you, Ecclesiastes 1 9. Okay, where do I go? Okay, 1 9. Okay, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So basically, um, King Solomon was the writer. King Solomon was the writer of Ecclesiastes 1, chapter 1, verse 9. And he's a very wise man, one of the wisest men in the Bible. He was bestowed wisdom by God, who has infinite wisdom. And so that's why he was had such a... In, in a, in a an insightful mind, you know? And he wrote, there's nothing new under the sun. And I was thinking about this because I was thinking about the wicked people in the world. Um, and by the way, I wanted to mention, I forgot, but I hope the people that are listening from California, if you happen to be in that storm, I hope you have found a safe place and refuge and um, I hope you get the things that you need. If you have family mem- family members going through that crisis, uh, keep just keep praying, um, because um, these type of things are always hard to deal with. But just keep praying and praying for their safety and um, that they get the resources that they need and things of that sa- things of that nature. Um, 
Also, if you guys want to donate to the podcast, you can donate at my cash up, which is dollar sign Ashley Shante one five. And again, that's Ashley Shante S H A N T E one five dollar sign in front. And you can visit my website again, linktree slash Ashley Shante L I N K T R dot E E slash Ashley Shante to get direct to get the link directly to my cash app to donate. Even if it's just a dollar, it will be appreciated for my podcast. Okay. Um, so King Solomon, the wisest man in the Bible, got his wisdom gifted to him from the most high, the true eternal living God, Yahweh. Um, and he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And so he said, there's nothing new under the sun. So when we come in contact with people who are, are wanting to be obnoxious, you know, you can go in a gas station these days or beauty supply store ladies and somebody is saying a rude comment toward you or somebody has a rude look toward you. Um, people in traffic have road rage, you know, um, where they they curse you out if they feel like you you're in their way or some of it. It's it's like these people have been like this for centuries. Um, people have always been selfish. Like even in Bible times, I mean, no matter what decade you name, it's like people never change. You know, they say a zebra never changed their stripes. I now understand what that that saying means because people have been the same since biblical days, since the Old Testament, like stubborn. People are still stubborn, selfish. Some people are selfish. Um, you know, some people... <sighs> They, they they act like they, I mean, humans have a lot of different characteristics that are, that are unfavorable. Um, when we come in contact with humans, we don't know what we're going to get. It's like uh, Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You, you never know what you're going to get. You really don't. I mean, especially when we're dealing with last days, people, okay? I mean, even if you're, you're a student and you go to college, or your children are going to these public schools or maybe even these private schools, um, they're coming in contact with every type of personality known to man. And, and, you know, there are spirits. I do believe in that thing where they say there are certain spirits on people that spirits from 5,000 years ago, like, you know, the spirit of, um, uh, uh, of recklessness. You know, some people got that spirit where they do everything reckless. Uh, they, they, they don't, they just randomly pick relationships with people that they don't even prepare to, to research on or know. They just jump in relationships ignorantly. And, you know, and this is not to be judgmental. It's just saying, it's just observing that these people are the same. You know, the human they're, they're, humans are very intelligent, but they haven't evolved that much as they think they have. Uh, we haven't evolved that much as we think we have because we still carry the same old traits. We can't we can't even figure out how to get rid of real hunger. You know, we can't even figure out how to get women and men pay equality. We can't figure it out because there are sinister things going on behind the scenes causing these discrepancies um we can't figure out how to solve race relations you know humans have too many defects to solve those things but we do have Yahweh promising to solve all of that by getting rid of the wicked and the wicked one Satan so we can't have that to look forward to but while I'm, why am I bringing this up? You might say, Ashley, why are you bringing this up? We know that people ain't like change. We know people can be, you know, pretty dirty in spirit. Right. We are made of sin. We inherit sin, you know. But there are those of us who do try to live 
to who to try who do try to exemplify the fruitage of the spirit, right? Who try to exemplify fruit, good fruit. You know, we like our tree to bear good fruit, but for those who are swayed in their flesh and easily provoked and always angry and 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 like to manipulate people or ridicule people or uh, and, and we cross these people in life through school. Uh, through different events and public places, um, you know, you you during these last days, you could walk into a Walmart. I mean, walk into a McDonald's and see somebody getting slapped. I mean, there's a video. There was a video going around where a customer tried to slap a McDonald's worker, and then they had to hold the worker back from hitting the customer. It's like, what in the world, like? This this is what we have to deal with. This is, you know, but I bring this up to say that it's a reminder that we shouldn't expect anything less. Um, because if we could recall our Messiah was spit on, ridiculed, whipped, beat, made fun of, yeah, um, you know, everything that we get persecuted for, we go through in persecution he went through and i believe the messiah said at one point um you know a slave is not greater than their master so if i have been persecuted you will too and so what we can do is change our attitude and our emotions about it like yeah it's going to be a strain to go into a school or go into college or, or, or go to those parent teacher meetings or go to, into that work office or into your workplace and deal with these folks who are um, led by flesh and led by not the Holy Spirit, but led by Satan's spirit to say and do certain things that are not favorable to other humans. But we have to deal with them. And so it, it, it's our best bet to have an attitude of, you know what? I'm just going to go with the flow. You know, I'm going to see these things. I may have to go into a work environment or a school environment with these people, but I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm going to let it roll off my back. You know, as long as they're not putting their hands on me, trying to bodily harm me, I'm not going to be provoked, right? That's the best thing we could do is not be provoked by wicked men and women. You know, um, and the best thing you can do is also build a fortress around your household and your family. Let your house be a safe haven for everybody to come up out of the world to. Like when when your spouse get off work or from school or from running errands or from dealing with the public, (laughs) you know, dealing with the public is a whole... Another job now. It's like a, it's like a, a, a shift almost. Um, so when your spouse or your children or your household members come from out that public, the best thing you can do is be a safe haven for them when they, when 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 they get home and when you get home. If you're a single person living by yourself, the best thing you can do is make your home such a safe haven environment. Um, Holy Spirit filled environment that when you get off, then you when you get out at, from dealing with the public, that you can come home to a refuge, if you will. Um, but also with the attitude knowing that there ain't nothing new under the sun. I mean, they did this to to Jesus. They accused Jesus. You know, the Pharisees always try to catch him slipping up. They're like, let's. Let's see if we can ask him this and see what answer he gives and see if we can snatch him up like that. You know, just like they they were conniving and asked him about the Sabbath. Like, let's ask him, should we do work on the Sabbath? And 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 Yeshua told them, well, if somebody, if a shepherd, which one of you, if your sheep went in a ditch or a pit, fell in a pit, would not get him out on the Sabbath? And they know they would. And, and, and that's doing a good deed. So how could you try to catch him, slip him, catch him slipping, catch Yeshua slipping by trying to get him to say, oh, you know, could you do work on a Sabbath? (laughs) 
I mean, Yeshua said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. You worried about the Sabbath. You so hyper focused on the Sabbath. You in the prayer, when God's son is right in front of you. I am your salvation. I am the way, the truth and the light, you know? So, you know, you can think about the Sabbath, but what about your salvation? <laughs> you, know? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like you hyper focus on the Sabbath and, and the Messiah is right here in your prison. So it's just crazy that they won't even believe him. And then you got those people that think he's just a prophet. And, you know, someone asked me recently, well, what's the difference from Jesus and other prophets? Um, the other prophets didn't die on a stake and give up their body and their blood for uh, they made atonement for our sins so that we may have everlasting life. How could I mean, am I missing something here? Because I don't think any other prophet has done that. So why would Jesus be laid as a labeled as a prophet? Prophets don't do that. Prophets don't sacrifice their life to make atonement for your sins. The prophets had an important job. They were to deliver messages at that time and for future prophecies. And that was an important assignment from the Most High. But there's definitely a difference between our Messiah and the prophets. Our Messiah was not a prophet. He was a redeemer and he was a rabbi. And he was God's son. And he was born and conceived through immaculate conception. The prophets were born the regular way. Not through uh, the Holy Spirit's uh, supplying them the other half of their DNA. You know? So it's it's just like, I'm not trying to sound condescending or anything but at the same time some questions that are asked are just like wow the devil has really blinded people and made them very ignorant and it's like you could have a phd or two phds and you would literally ask a question like that because the devil is so good at what he does and blinds people from the truth um but anywho Nothing new under the sun, right? Satan has been at his tactics since the Garden of Eden. He's very cunning, and he's going to be always cunning. Every generation, he's going to do that. Um, the best thing we can do as believers in regards to nothing new being under the, <laughs> under the sun, as, as King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, the best thing we could do is, like I said, make our home such a, a sanctification place and such a safe haven that when we come from dealing with the world or come up out of that public sector, we can find refuge in the, in our home. Just have a corner in your home where the Bible is open um, or have a corner in your home where you can have a poster of a, of a, a prayer Um have um, some smells going off in your home, some essential oils misting through the air that are calming and relaxing, you know, um, play the music in your home. You know, I know a lot of people trying to save on electricity, but if you can do it, you know, try to play some music. So when you come home, you can hear at least some good sounds, sound therapy, you know, it's very good. You can hear some good sounds. You can smell some good aromas, you know, some essential oils. You can hear some good music playing, smelling some relaxing essential oils, and being able to immediately go into a refuge in your your prayer corner, you know, um, before you do anything else after you come up out of the world and, and to your home. And if you are not a single person and you have a spouse and children, well, that's even better because you guys can all meet together and give each other emotional support and refuge um you know as soon as you come up out of the world um but anyway we just gotta keep our heads on the on the straight and narrow and have tunnel vision yeah we're gonna you know we're gonna walk by some come in contact with some people that are you know, wicked. They're they're not anointed with the Holy Spirit. 
they're, they're, they're not living by the Holy Spirit. They're living by the flesh. And uh, we're going to have to come in contact with them, especially since we have to work and and we we got to go to school, right? Unless you decide to homeschool your children, uh, that that's a good idea, actually. Um, but for, for college people, you know, you can't really... I mean, you can go to school online these days. I'm not even going to lie. You can go to school online, but you still have to connect with your instructor and whoever else online. Even, even if you work from home, you still got to connect with the people at the company that you work for. And some of them, you know, they they might be worldly people with worldly attitudes and last day mentalities, you know, and you got to you got to go through it with them. You know, you got to you got to keep the attitude that, hey. Nothing new in the sun. These the same people that was probably same spirits that were probably um, where Christ got crucified at five thousand years ago. The same spirits that were out there, the same spirits that it manifested in twenty twenty four, honey. But anyway, y'all have a good night, and I hope you have a wonderful Thursday tomorrow. Um, if you if you've been praying. To meet the love of your life, I hope that you meet them tomorrow. Um, if you've been praying for a new job, I hope that you get that phone call, that email tomorrow. Uh, if you've been praying to for a situation with family issues, I hope it's resolved with a solution or an idea tomorrow. Praise God by means of Yah's Holy Spirit in the mighty name of King Yeshua Mishiach. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. I love you, and please come back for another episode. Bye-bye for now.